What's up? I'm Alex, the entrepreneur, and today I have a question from Gustavo. He asks about working with Docker and Strapi. And I want to preface this by saying that I've uh, used Docker in production. However, I definitely doesn't, don't consider myself an expert in that. Uh, I basically dealt with it rather than used it uh, in a very efficient way. So uh, take, my, take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt. I'm basically going to be pointing you to references that may help you even further. So as you can see from the answer that I gave him and uh, the links that I'm going to make sure to put in the description after this video, um, there's an image in Hubdo Docker for Strapi and uh, there's also a very thorough guide on working with Docker that we basically we're going to go through and it's in the, uh, in the Strapi documentation. So at the end of the day, we can pull these Docker Compose YAML files uh, that we can get literally from here or we can get by running the Strapi Docker, which I'm going to mention in a second. But basically, by doing that, we're specifying that we're using the Strapi image called Strapi slash Strapi, and then we may feed it specifically environment variable. And uh, uh, we will also use a different app, or rather a different image for the database, for Postgres, which uh, uh, we, you can also use SQLite and MongoDB, by the way. And the beauty of using SQLite is that it requires zero configuration. So I'll show you uh, that one, and then you can go deeper by reading through the docs. And uh, at the end of the day, something that I've also researched, which may be a big question that you have, is whether the data will be permanent or not. And from what I can tell you, and again, take it from a grain of salt, this installation that checks the volumes will actually keep your data persistent. So that means that uh, if you're working with one computer, I cannot assure you with more than one computer, but if you're working on your own machine and then you're deploying somewhere else, you should be having your data be consistent and your data should, uh, basically you're not gonna have losses of data because your data will be stored inside of the Docker image and every time you rebuild the image or restart it, the, um, the Docker, uh, Docker will check if there's some previous data already existing and as such, it will conserve it. And uh, if you go through the video and you see what I do with my local install, you'll see that that works. However, something that I've done personally, so even though the image should guarantee consistency of data, something that we've always done with teams that I work with that have used Docker and Strapi would be to just set up shared development credentials uh, and uh, uh, a unique uh, uh, production credentials, but shared development credentials uh, to a database that is actually hosted outside of Docker. It could be hosted on AWS, DigitalOcean, etc., etc. And that's because by doing that, every developer would have access to the same development data which uh, makes it easier to test bugs. That's basically the reason why we did that. You could argue that that should be done only on a staging site. Uh, you can know, there's pros and cons to that, but in my experience, that's what we did. So all we did was we would go in the development environments. We would change this from using uh, uh, SQLite or uh, basic stuff. We will just change it to the production version, which is the one we've injected variables. And then we would have a shared .env file that we would pass around, of, of course, by while keeping privacy and uh, making sure not to leak it, but we will basically point to the same database because at the end of the day, that's what we needed. Now that said, if you want to get run, uh, get started with uh, with Strapi and, and uh, Docker, you can literally go in the docs as uh, uh, I showed you here. And then the beauty of this is that you can literally go on um, on this other link that I'm gonna make sure to have to that you get, which is Strapi slash Strapi dash Docker. And after you install Docker, which you can literally search for Docker download and you can get that. So uh, I assume you're an intelligent person and you can download Docker. But uh, once you do that, you can either create a new project by running this command, doc and run, dash it, dash p, uh, binding uh, 137 as the, whole, uh, as the port, and then uh, basically getting the app to run by using the strapi dash strapi image. And this is how you run a new fresh install. So this is literally all you have to do. And again, I'm going to make sure to have the link in the, in the description. But the second thing, which is what, we're, what I'm going to show you, is if you already have a, a project, you can just docker run dash it dash p 1337 dash v pwd and then strapi slash strapi. And basically, you're going to be able to run your own project in a dockerized container. And if you're working with SQLite, this is literally all you have to do because you're not going to need to run any, uh, you, don't, you don't need to feed any of this customization and uh, your data will be permanently there. So you're going to keep your, your data consistent 
you're not going to have to deal with any installation parts. So I'm going to show you a couple of steps of me uh, going through this process. But at the end of the day, you can check this doc, which is an amazing doc, and uh, this uh, GitHub repo. And also you want to check this documentation to get you started. And uh, make sure to let me know if you have any other question. And enjoy the rest of the video. So I have this project called uh, Policies Demo, which uh, runs, if I type npm run develop, it works. So the first thing I'll do following the documentation is I'll just open it on Visual Studio Code with Command O, and then I'll navigate to it, Entrepreneur. And then uh, we said uh, Policies Demo. And the first thing we need to do is delete the node modules because we don't want to use those. We want to use the ones that will be provided by Docker. So let's delete. The next thing we want to do is you can also use, there you go, you see this doc here. You can also use blah, blah, blah on your computer. First, make sure to delete node modules. And then we're going to cd in the project. And then we're going to run this command here. So let's try. And uh, uh, it's going to pull the uh, strappy image and it's going to set that up. So I'll see you on the other side once it's done installing. Once the pull of the strappy image hosted on Docker Hub will be complete, then the installer should automatically be calling yarn install, which will basically download all of the packages and it will basically set up the project so that it will be able to be run. Once yarn install is done, you'll see that uh, the project will automatically start. So we can navigate to localhost. 1337 slash admin and uh, since we will have a fresh database we're gonna have to apparently we don't have a fresh database so that actually is a good uh, thing because it means that uh, uh, your data will permanent uh, would be perm permanent I think that the reason why it's permanent on this case is because I run it with quick start which means that I have my data.db containing all of my data as such the data was left uh, permanently permanently there. Uh, I just want to touch on uh, uh, something that you may consider doing uh, when working with more than one developer and uh, that would be setting up your databases, database info, in this case it's just uh, the local data. But you may decide to set those up with uh, something similar to this, something similar to using uh, um, injected uh, variables and uh, you may decide to inject variables that uh, point to a database that is hosted outside of Docker uh, just for the specific uh, uh, reason that that way you can share your database with other uh, with other um, with other developers and additionally uh, the database can be reached by uh, by everyone so it's going to be a shared database so you may decide that's what we did in uh, a few uh, production situations in which we did use Docker we just had uh, uh, this database set up uh, through a .env so that we will then inject uh, uh, this, this database information related to a database that is hosted, is hosted somewhere else so that between developers we could share the same database. Uh, we typically do the same thing for staging and then we use a different database for production so that it's a completely separate database and nobody has access to it. Uh, or you know, only the sysadmin has access to it. So hopefully this clarifies a little bit of how to set up, uh, get started with Docker and Strapi. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions.